Welcome back to our podcast on solid ground. My name is Joe Boyle and I'm the social media specialist here at Helicon. And I'm joined with our CEO, Jay Silver, as well as our guest, Rich Kay from Keller Williams. So Rich, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Uh, my name is Rich Kay, as you said, and mm -hmm. I'm a realtor with Keller Williams. Um, I specialize in homes that have been affected by sinkhole. And the reason I chose to have that specialty, which may seem a little strange to people, is for 10 years, I was a senior project manager at Helicon, and I'd handle hundreds and hundreds of uh, repairs and walking homeowners through the process of repair. And it all stuck out to me that other than getting their house repaired, um, homeowners' number one concern was, what's going to happen to the value of my house now that it's had a sinkhole? So it was a natural flow into the real estate world um, once, once I was done there. And, I love my time in Helicon. Helicon's a great <laughs> company. And uh, had the insurance rules and laws not changed, I would have never left. <laughs> That's great. Well, we're happy to have yeah. you here. Yeah, super excited to yeah. have, uh, have Rich on the show. He was uh, at Helicon from the sinkhole heyday from 2010 to about 2020. Uh, but a plethora of uh, knowledge, both on the repair mm -hmm. side and and now you've been at Keller Williams about, about three years, I think, um, over there. Roughly, yeah, three, three years, years. And, and prior to my entry into the sinkhole world, um, I had my real estate license many years ago, and yeah. and so I wasn't new to the real estate world. Um, I was just coming back to it. Yeah. Right. So with sinkholes, uh, as everybody seeing our hot topic mm -hmm. in the news, Joe, you probably saw the uh, the Highland uh, Polk County oh, uh, yeah, sinkhole that, was, that just that recently, probably most recently, got filled. Uh, also up in the villages, up in Ocala, and uh, also out in Palm Harbor. Mm -hmm. So um, they're definitely in the news, and uh, topics have come up about homeowners with concern that aren't even adjacent to the sinkhole. It may be a, a street over or close by um, where homeowners are concerned with value. So we were yeah. excited to have Rich on the show with his uh, realtor expertise and, and background and uh, yeah. try to uh, bring some value uh, to folks out there that may have some concerns around these topics, whether they're looking to buy a, a home that was uh, sinkhole repair, or maybe it was maybe they want to buy an unrepaired sinkhole, or maybe it's a family that wants to sell their sinkhole or repaired sinkhole home and they want to get top dollar. So uh, exciting topic uh, to discuss today. Yes, definitely. All right, that leads into our first question. So, what are some key factors that potential home buyers should consider when looking at properties with possible sinkhole conditions? Well, obviously, um, if somebody's concerned that a home they're looking at has sinkhole activity and it hasn't been disclosed or the house has never been tested, you know, that opens a whole can of worms. Mm -hmm. um, the, reason, the reason being for that, if it's never been tested and you go and you see signs of a sinkhole, you know, the problem with that is you could say, well, get the house inspected. Well, to have a true sinkhole inspection where they do it, it's thousands and thousands of dollars. And not only that, the people who own the house would need to consent with it, and they may not want to open that can of worms. So for something that's never been tested and you see symptoms there, you know, I I would have to advise my clients if they're actually over-concerned that, you know, this probably isn't the house for them in that case there. If it's been tested and we have something to look at reports to look at which would be much more ideal we can assess the situation um if it was a positive sinkhole positive for sinkhole was it repaired if it was negative we can look at it and make sure that uh at least in my from my perspective having looked at thousands of reports over the years that okay it's it's reasonable to assume that this house is fine and that these things are superficial on some level based on the report. Now things change, so it's gonna depend on how old the report is. But in the end, it's really due diligence and, and using you know a certain level of common sense um, or maybe uncommon sense. You know, <laughs> if you're going in there with somebody who doesn't know what they're looking at, uh, like a realtor who doesn't know, they might just kind of brush it off and say, yeah, you know, I don't worry about it. It's never been tested. And, and, and that, for me, that's not the right that's not the right way to go about doing it. Right, that makes sense. And is it required for realtors to disclose to their clients about any known sinkhole issues with a home they're looking to buy? And if not, why? 
That's a great question. Yeah. It is. Uh, question seven on the seller's disclosure is about sinkholes. And it'll ask, has a house ever had a sinkhole, a claim with insurance? Mm -hmm. uh, if so, were the proceeds that were paid out by the insurance company used to repair the house? And then it talks about adjacent properties, properties next door. And so that's, uh, you know, that's, I guess, you have to know. And then there's, you know, there are boxes that says don't know, don't know. So, uh, but in general, if if you owned the home when a sinkhole occurred um, and was tested, you're going to know these answers and you're probably going to have some reports. But it is required to disclose. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you go back years, you'll see there, there are people who checked the wrong boxes on that and got in big trouble for it. Oh, so wow. you always want, you know, from my perspective, when I'm talking to a customer, there's nothing to hide there. You have to be honest. You have to be straightforward. Mm -hmm. And pricing the house accordingly is the way to go. If you had a sinkhole and it was never repaired, that's fine. There's still people who can they're gonna, that will mm -hmm. buy that house, but you can't say it never had a sinkhole, never did this, or, or you get yourself in bad trouble. Yeah, yeah. Likewise, totally. if it was repaired, you want to definitely disclose that. Disclose and that. You should have engineering documentation to to go along with it as well. Um, say you get it tested though, Rich, and it uh, comes back with a clean bill of health. Are you required to disclose that to the next home buyer? And I think from my perspective, I would think you would want to, that that has some value to it, that, hey, I had this home tested, here's my report, mm -hmm. I have a clean bill of health, there's no sinkhole conditions mm -hmm. at my home. Um, but are you required to to disclose that? You had that testing done. Uh, you're not required, but I like yeah. your train of thought, especially in certain areas. Um, there's a place in the MLS that realtors have access to where you can put attachments and I always recommend that that would be where you would put a report and a report that comes back with a clean bill of health. Mm -hmm. Let's say you're in Spring Hill or, or Hudson, those areas that are just known to have of sinkholes and you're in a neighborhood that has it. Well, whether they say it or not, anybody who's going in by it, who's going to buy in those areas and is, is dealing with a realtor who is um, doing their job right, mm -hmm. is going to be aware that there's heavy sinkhole activity in this area. So instead of walking into a house going, geez, I wonder if this, I wonder if it's mm -hmm. affected, but never been revealed. It would be nice to walk in with a clean bill of health, you know, it, and if I'm a realtor, you know, one of the things I have always done on especially repaired sinkholes is in the comments section, um, a, all, all the reports are in there for the realtors to view, but they don't know what they're looking at. You know, it most, most don't, some do, most don't. So what I always put in my notes is call me because I want to have a discussion with this person uh, and I want to tell them, here's what was wrong, here's what was done to fix it, and here's what it is now. And assuming, you know, most houses were most houses were repaired by reputable companies. Um, Helicon being, obviously, I worked there, so it's number one on my list. Um, but there's a bunch of, there's a, there's a handful of reputable companies. And most of them were fixed by reputable companies. Most of them have good, most of them have reports that go along with that, but not all of them were. Yeah, yeah. So the, the point being with it is when it was, especially when it was like a Helicon job and maybe I was involved in it and the people hired me to sell their house, I want to talk to that realtor and say exactly what I said. Here's what was wrong. Here's what was done. And here's what it's like now. And if you want me to, I've got a great example of that. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. So there was a house in Hillsborough County, Tampa Palms area, actually Pebble Creek. And we did a massive repair on this house. This house was beautiful. It was on a lake, nice house. Mm -hmm. We did underpinning. We did chemical grout. We did regular grouting. This thing was Fort Knox, <laughs> you know. And realistically, not only should the fact that it had a sinkhole and it was repaired increase the value, it should have increased it significantly. But as I had to talk to my customer and be realistic with them, I'm like, you know, I know you spent hundreds of thousands of dollars. I don't remember exactly what it was um, to fix this. The real the reality is people certainly aren't going to pay, pay more. Yeah. Pay a premium for that. Pay a premium. Maybe they'll pay market value. But, oh, they paid. Yeah. yeah, they paid market value. And mm -hmm. that's not uncommon. But the point being is when the realtors called me, I wanted to tell them this house is better than any house in this neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And that's not just opinion. Well, maybe it's fact though. I mean, like the way yeah. we used to joke is like, yeah, a nuclear bomb could hit here and this house would be standing and everything else would be gone. Cause that's 
how solid it was. Oh, wow. And one other thing to say about that is there were lifetime warranties to go with that as well that were transferable. So again, in that case, not only was it not a hindrance, it was a selling point. Mm -hmm. Nice. But the realtors needed the other realtor needed to know that I had to, I had to convey that to them so that they could convey that to their customer. Right, exactly. And back backing up uh, on the the first question about if a home buyer is you know you're working with a the buyer they're looking at a home, and uh, yeah you you see some potential sinkhole conditions maybe some light hairline stair step cracking um, possibly you know windows and doors maybe sticking or or uh, some of the common common signs, maybe the concrete has settled in some, some areas. Um, but you know, you and I both know rich, it's not definitely sinkhole. There's a lot of different construction defects in stucco and moisture intrusion that can cause cracking that can be similar. Um, so if, if a buyer is extremely interested in a home, but some of these conditions are there, you're right. The, the seller probably isn't going to elect to say, yeah, I'll, I'll test it for you. And we'll go ahead and, and go through that process and spend those funds when you know they probably don't need to do that to sell sell the house. Um, you know how how can they get a you know peace of mind? Is it through a, a home inspection? Is it through having you know Helicon's happy to come out and do do foundation inspection as well? Um, but do you have? Uh, I know there's some of these home inspectors that also have engineering arm. Maybe barrel engineering is one that specialize in inspecting for some of these conditions. Um, where is a homeowner, if they love the house, but they are a little hesitant from some of these little sinkhole condition signs, and, and we have a ton of those up on our, our website if you're interested in looking at, at some of the signs. It could be the baseboard or the floor has, has dropped away, um, but tons of little, little signs, and they're not necessarily sinkhole, but they love the kitchen, they love the bathroom, <laughs> but there's a couple of these little things, and they just want somebody with some expertise um, without going to the full process of testing the soil where they, they left. Yeah, well, I think you hit on a good point. Like most home inspectors that a realtor would um, refer are not going to be able to do that. They're in, and for liability reasons, they are most likely going to push that down the road and say, you know, we see signs, but that's the extent of it. But like a company like Barrel, yes, or calling Helicon and having Helicon go out there and take a look. Um, those would be the answers, you know? Yeah, yeah th th those are really the answers. Uh, and your normal home inspector is not gonna be able to tell you much, um, but a, like a company like Barrel Engineering or mm -hmm. even Helicon, mm -hmm. you know, if, I mean, you guys look at them all day, every day and have been yeah. for, for a long time. And a lot of times we'll look at them and say, yeah, these are some possible signs, but you'll you'll have to test yep. to truly know. Yeah. and. Um, you know, it might not be any anything you need to be concerned with. But uh, I, I had a but if it's uh, I guess if it's, re, you know, if, if we're shifting into kind of if it's repaired, how how hard is it to, to sell it? Yeah. Um, you know, the, the people out uh, on the news story with the Polk County, they were really concerned once this is fixed, what's the value of my home? Can I get market value and from the story you shared with us? It sounds like good news if it's done properly. If it's done uh, by a reputable company, if it has some sort of guarantee that you're in very, very good position with the value, is that what you're? So I'm, I'm jumping ahead here, Joe. No, you're it's, fine. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how difficult drive. is it to sell these homes? Is it, you know, and and I think to to broaden that horizon, just because of our uh, long tenure of decades in the industry, let's also the second question: of this how was it back? 20 years ago versus mm -hmm. now, because you and I both know it was a different stigma back then. But, you know, not to jump back into the past, you know, how is how hard is it to sell these homes? I mean, it sounds like you you sold this one beautiful home. It was like Fort Knox. Oh, it was great. And, I had uh, I, in the end, I had, you know, it, so, it was back in the time when you were getting multiple offers. In the end, it turned into a bidding war, worked out beautifully for my customers. They were thrilled. And uh, so, so, so good news for, for homeowners. You, you really don't have any concern. Yeah, for real. Any time, as long as it's done properly. <laughs> any time I've sold a house that had a sinkhole that was done by a reputable company, um, I have never. I have always advised against any sort of discount on the price. Mm -hmm. um, when circumstances are normal, you know. It's so I've always. I've never seen it as a hindrance as far as getting full market value, assuming mm -hmm. 
it's been priced right. And yeah. so I would get calls from people, sometimes customers, potential customers saying, oh, it had a sinkhole. Well, I'm not interested then. And I would try to educate them a little bit on it. Well, here, let me explain why. But I'm not going to waste my breath on somebody who already made up their mind. And what I always told my customers, that's fine. Don't worry about it. Let's say it never had an issue and 10 out of 10 people who like the kitchen were going to make an offer on it. Well, forget. You don't need 10 out of 10. You need one out of 10 to get what you're looking for. So it was now let's just say it had a sinkhole and there's seven out of 10 people go seven out of 10 people say, well, I'm still interested. And three go, well, it had a sinkhole again. No offense to those people, but mm-hmm. in certain areas, they're they're coming from a place where it should be backwards. Like almost there's some neighborhoods where it's like, if this house has never been tested and never been repaired, you really mm-hmm. shouldn't be buying here. Because look, sinkhole, mm-hmm. sinkhole, sinkhole, sinkhole. Oh, never been tested. Never had a problem. Sinkhole. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's So that's surrounded by my them. mindset is a little bit, you know, common sense. Mm-hmm. Like if you live in a place where there's a lot of crime, you ought to have an alarm. Right. That makes sense. Mm. So how do you advise clients to approach the inspection process for properties with prior sinkhole problems and or repairs? And like, have you ever well, had to advise your clients? Yes. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah uh, well, I had a customer. Uh, I sold their house, but they had purchased a house um, in Marion County. And they'd already gone up. They, well, they were in the process of purchasing it. So they were working with somebody else mm-hmm. up in Marion County. And they called me. And said, "Hey, you know, we want you to help. We want you to help us sell our house in Tampa, but we already have a realtor up here. We're thinking about buying this house that had a sinkhole. Can you help us?" And I said, "Send me the reports." And I looked at the reports, and they only had partial reports. See, that's the other part. Sometimes you only get, you know, you need this to see the whole picture, and you only have this, and right. you have to just, you know, apply common sense. So what I I saw the company that did the repair. Good company, been in business for a long time. I saw the procedure that they did, seemed to fit what was wrong with it. Um, most cases, I didn't see the, the 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 initial inspection. That's the piece that was missing. So I said, when you go to your inspection, walk around. You should be fine based on what I'm saying, but you know, I'm, but look for these things. And then basically gave them the list that Jay talked about earlier. Mm-hmm. Is there any stair step cracking? Right. Are there windows or doors that are having problems opening and shutting? Do you see any settlement? How long? And, I, and we knew from the report that the repair had been done, whatever, seven, 10 years ago. I don't remember exactly what it was. So long story short, gave him a laundry list of things to look for. He went through his process, looked for all those things. They loved the house, kitchen and bath. It's always what sells houses. <laughs> and, uh, and, was satisfied. So they ended up buying it. That's a case where like, I wasn't involved in the transaction and they weren't asking me to drive, you know, two hours North of here to go and look at it. They just wanted some, some guidance. And so anyway, it worked out well for them. Yeah, that's important. And what type of public record resources do you use for these sinkhole claims or past sinkholes? What? So Pasco County is my, is in my opinion, the easiest, most user-friendly Pasco County property appraiser. It's super easy to go in. You can see the status. You can see a lot of information, you know, uh, is it repaired or unrepaired? There's a special section on there. They're the easiest to use. Hernando County uh, property appraiser too. That's pretty good. And Hillsboro, you know, Hillsboro is not as user-friendly, but it's got great information in there. So in general, you know, you go to the property appraisers, Mm -hmm. And you might not be able to navigate it very easily, but it is what it is. That's where I have found my my resources for this. Okay, that's good to know. And some of the the things that you can find on there in Pasco County, uh, you can find the original engineer's mm-hmm. findings of what their re- repair recommendation was. Um, so I think when uh, you know, Rich, when you're advising, how how do you when you're looking at a, a repaired sinkhole home and you're advising one of your clients on whether this was a, um, a well done repair by a reputable company, um, you know, what's, could we step through the processes of that? I, I, I think it's, you know, first you possibly, you gotta have that, like you said, the whole story, you gotta have the original engineering report that was done 
originally the first mm -hmm. engineer that came out there to do the soil borings, the testing that confirmed there were sinkhole conditions and made a recommendation. Um, and then from there, uh, it would come over to a repair company like Helicon that would conduct the whether most of the time, typically in the sinkhole repair world, it was a combination of deep compaction grouting paired with uh, upper soil chemical grout was the standard prescription. So if the original engineer report matched uh, what was done out in the by a reputable company that has a guarantee, then you can pretty much bet that this is a, a, a good a good repair that you can rely on for for resale value. Um, the alternative what I've what we've seen and you may have seen and this is probably what uh, if you are looking into a, a sinkhole home, you, you want to make if it was a confirmed sinkhole, you'll find some homes that are stabilized foundation stabilization only maybe underpinning and I'm sure Rich has, has uh, had his experience seeing the, these maybe it's uh, also you know say this is the the house maybe they've only underpinned one wall mm -hmm. or one corner mm -hmm. um, but the original engineer report says you know this needs grout this needs chemical maybe it needs pins too well why did this other engineer say that we only needed this one wall and you know I don't want to go into a lot of the just problems with be a lot better to pin the whole house um, you have differential uh, settlement so if you secure one part of the house while the other part is still moving you're going to cause even mm -hmm. more damage to where if you just did nothing whatsoever um, and you know there may not be any damage at the time on this house but these are some things that a unknowing homeowner maybe from up north or even somebody in florida that doesn't have the experience that rich or i do that knows these public record resources to to truly vet was my repair done properly and if it is it you know great news as rich shared you have no problem selling these homes and uh i think we'll touch on insurance probably next um but as far as if you get it done properly and it's you know done to the original engineering report and the sinkhole was repaired or even if it was you know modified but there still was grouting procedure and there still was sinkhole remediation mm -hmm. type solutions done um you know that uh you know, is definitely um i think very very important for homeowners to that are looking at one of these um these homes <clears throat> i agree jay i mean you said a lot and i <laughs> If I would have said what you said, it would have sounded very similar. Yeah. <laughs> just re reward it. Yeah. <laughs> reward it just I, I'd say just for... I'd say the number one thing, you know, the biggest thing to avoid. So there's no grades on. There's not a one through 10 scale on how severe is a sinkhole. And there's not a one yeah. through 10 scale on how was the repair. There's did it have a sinkhole? Was there a repair? Because there's yeah. some houses like we I would look at some engineer reports back in the day. You know, confirmed sinkhole, mm -hmm. and you'd look at him, and you'd go, like, "What? This is not a sinkhole." Like, oh, there's sinkhole. a there's a two inch void in the soil, <laughs> thirty seven foot down sinkhole. You know, that's different than seven foot void mm -hmm. of soil. Exactly. So on the house that is barely a sinkhole, like it's like a one. If you were to, you know, it's less critical. But on the house that's the seven foot void, twenty three foot down. Boy, you better make sure it was fixed right. And that's the one snafu that I, you know, you want to keep yourself out of. One that was a seven or an eight or a nine on severity mm -hmm. that had a one as a repair. Because uh, that that's yeah, gonna, one that could be a cover collapse situation. Yeah, that but could they, be big trouble down the yeah, road. Yeah. That could no, be, you're actually no, you're exactly very, right. Very right, Rich there. Yeah. So in your experience, how have sinkhole conditions impacted the appraisal process? And what advice do you have for realtors to navigate this challenge? I taught when I first started doing the real estate again, I, I have a friend who's an appraiser. Well, not a, mm -hmm. a guy who's his son played baseball with my son mm -hmm. and he was an appraiser. And, uh, you know, that was one of the questions I had. I said, what do you do in sinkholes? Yeah, and, right. and the whole thing has evolved, really. Mm -hmm. Like Jay was saying, 20 years ago, yes. he would have been scratching his head and trying to do all these... What he told me is like, as long as it's been repaired, and his definition mm -hmm. repair was the county records say it's repaired, yeah. he uses it normal. Um, and again, that, is that right? I don't know, you know, but he yeah. didn't say like, I went, he goes out of his way 
And this has been my experience with other appraisers too, that they go out of their way to find other houses that had sinkholes that had been repaired. They look at the comps like they would look at a comp if it never had anything, which ultimately in some cases is the right way to do it. In some cases it's not. Right. So, yeah. So that leads me into my next question. Can a sinkhole in one home devalue the other homes around it? Or is it like within a certain distance that like it's determined or how does that work? Well, you go back to the question on the um, seller's disclosure and it only asks about adjacent, adjacent uh, okay. properties, you know, and it's maybe an insurance person mm -hmm. carrier yep. would, you know, expound upon that. But um I really can't expound on it other than if it's an adjacent property. Okay. And again, it's sort of, you know, you got to apply common sense to some of this stuff. And there's so many unknowns without talking to somebody. So, so let's just say they clicked, yes, the adjacent home had a sinkhole problem. Well, in a perfect world, can we get those reports to look at them? Because now I can look and go, oh, this is a one on the scale. No big deal. Or this is a seven. Um you know, interestingly enough, in a lot of cases when we would do multiple mm -hmm. homes in a row, Jay, and you can speak yeah. to this too, we would we would grout this side of the house mm -hmm. and then we'd go to grout, you know, the house next door on that side and it would take less grout than we expected. Oh, jeez. <laughs> right? Yeah. It, but I think also, Rich, is kind of, uh, you know, alluding to is whether it was a five or a two, as long as it was repaired properly, you know, it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. Um, and if it was adjacent to you, I don't think you you're even required to disclose that about an adjacent property next to you that had a sinkhole repair done. There's a question um, on it. Oh, there is. On, okay. On, I did on not know Question that. number seven. Yeah. And then talking about stigma, he brought up 20 years ago, they'd be scratching their head. 20 years ago, there was a stigma and sinkhole homes probably went for 20, 30%, even if they were repaired, yeah. probably took about a 20, 30% hit in value. Yeah. Wow. Um, you know, I'll share my thought on why that is, is, is the thought is that the, the repair process of grouting and chemical was very new back then. And people weren't sure, was this going to be a long-term um, fix? And I think you do have something in here about reoccurrence. Uh, once a home is, is fixed with a sinkhole, you know, Rich shared, we, we back it with a lifetime warranty. We're so confident uh, in the repair process and the way the remediation um, or the repair is conducted. It's a prescribed method. It's followed. It's adhered to very strictly the process and the results are incredible. We've had, um, you know, knock on wood, we've had about zero re warranty reoccurrence um, claims to date. Um, but back then, um, you know, it, it was a, it was a different, uh, it was a different ball game back then. Exactly. Um, yeah. For everybody, you know, for insurance carriers, for everybody, it would took hundred percent of grades. It's like, yeah. Well, it's evolved, like you were saying. Evolved. It's, you know, people now know, like, well, if I'm going to buy in Spring Hill, <laughs> now it's evolved to where people, as if you, if you know, you're going to buy Spring Hill, you're going to buy in Pasco, you're surrounded by a bunch of repaired homes, but yours was never tested. Yeah, it's uh, it's kind here. of people know now that this is a very secure repair process, and the results are, the track record is excellent. Not even speaking for just Helicon, some of our industry peers as well have very good track records with very very low reoccurrence rates which is great news and that's probably also why um it's not seen as a stigma anymore and, and folks as long as it's repaired can get uh, market value it's, for it's their funny homes. so people who live in florida it's completely not a stigma anymore but yeah. some of the listings that i've had in the past i'll get calls from people you know it's a the world is big. The world's very small now. <laughs> I would get calls from people up north and they would ask about it. And they were, you know, they were just clueless about it. So that, so in, in their eye, it, but I've sold houses to people from up north too, after having the, after explaining, okay, let me, let me explain to you what this means. And, you know, once they understood it, but, yeah. ah, single, you know, <laughs> they get the New York or the Massachusetts, mm -hmm. um, what I yeah. would consider accent. <laughs> they, yeah. What I consider my accent. Oh, what, uh, what people typically don't know and understand, they sometimes have a fear of. Sure. Um, right, exactly. But once you get a greater understanding of, of what it is down here. But as Rich mentioned, you're still going to have a small percentage that no matter what, they just want nothing to do with it. Right. Uh, and that's that, okay. that is such a, it's a, a small it's, uh, it's, market share. As I've shared with my sellers, mm -hmm. that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next. <laughs> right. You got a beautiful yeah. kitchen. You got beautiful bathrooms. It's been repaired. The right person, 
is going to come along and you're going to sell the house, right. period. Exactly. So how do you suggest realtors communicate potential sinkhole issues to buyers without causing this unnecessary alarm? I'm a big believer in transparency. Mm -hmm. That's it. Tell people is that, you know, I, I've, I've helped a tremendous amount of other realtors who call me, Hey, can you help me? My customer's freaking out mm -hmm. about this. And for a small fee, no, I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I help people because I'm a helper in life. Um, I'll help them. I'll just say, let me send over the reports and I'll try my best to explain to them mm -hmm. what I see. And But I'm a transparent person. You know, I'm not trying to pull the wool over anybody's eyes and I'm not trying to assist anybody in pulling the wool over anybody's eyes. So I always advise, if you don't know what you're talking about, you are welcome to reach out to me. Sort of the norm is, you know, because of liability reasons, because even when I went to Keller Williams and I said, hey, here's what I'm thinking. I want to be the sinkhole guy. Mm -hmm. Their advice to other realtors or just in general is, you know, you don't want to start talking from a standpoint of an expert in sinkholes because you can put liability on yourself. So a lot of realtors in general will just kind of like the reports are in there, the report, you know, they share the reports and that's it. And they don't speak about it. So it's sometimes difficult other than looking at a report and the reports are not the easiest things in the world mm -hmm. for, for the normal person to understand. So anyway, but people don't want to get themselves in trouble because there's attorneys out there that are waiting for people to screw up. So who can blame them? Um, but you got to be transparent. You know, if you don't know, don't pretend that you do. Yeah, you're right. Exactly. So what are some ways for realtors to educate themselves about the different foundation and soil stabilization methods needed to repair sinkholes? Call me. <laughs> I mean, really, you can call me or call somebody like Helicon, you know. Um, yeah, there's um, there's tons of inf information online, yeah, online, YouTube videos on sinkhole repair. We have mm -hmm. a plethora of, of content on our YouTube channel that goes in from every ground soil ground improvement soil stabilization to underpinning helical piles um you name it just uh, uh also we we offer um lunch and learns to to realtors where we'll come in uh go over a topic like underpinning or chemical grout or even sinkholes um so we're happy to come in and and do an hour uh educational but uh yeah there's there's tons of information out there online i think is where you where you start but if you want, you know, true expert advice, you know, going to Rich or a repair company like like Helicon uh, would be your best uh, bet to to make sure you know, everybody knows not everything you can believe is on the on the internet. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Can yeah. you describe uh, an experience? I guess either of us with a, yeah. a sinkhole or a severe foundation related problem. Um, you know that. This necessarily didn't affect the buying or, or selling of the home, but uh, you know, I recall the one we were chatting about up in the the villages. It yeah. was one of your your customers. It was gosh, huge cover collapse that happened on the the corner of this this house, and um, you know, it was a team collaboration uh, between the villages and a lot of their heavy equipment that they have throughout the the community. Um, but all that, you know, rich, it went over, oh, I think was, it went over Easter, yeah, um, was, but it was, it was quite the site and, uh, you know, we, I won't spoil it, but the home was saved, but I guess, yeah, <laughs> but yeah. It, the, the, oh, you shouldn't have told them that. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been a cliffhanger. Uh, and then Joe, one more thing when we're yeah. after this story, let's just touch on the insurance aspect of sure, it. Cause yeah, I do yeah. have some experience with, yeah, definitely. with that, um, getting insurance on these things anyway. So yeah, the, the, that was an amazing story. That was a real proud moment for, uh, for me anyway, because it was my project, but I, I only played a small role in it. Um, as Jay was saying, the engineers were able to show. I, I got a call because my son was at hockey practice or something like that. And I got a call from a foreman at Helicon and said, hey, a small hole has opened up at that mm -hmm. project you're doing out in the villages. And uh, I'm, I'm going to run out there or something like that. And this is like 10 o'clock in the morning. My phone rings at 11. He's like, you better come out here. <laughs> the hole had gotten bigger. And the long and the, sh the short of it was a big, massive hole had opened up. And something had to be done. So we were on the phone with the 
people who were going to provide us with the flowable fill, which is basically used to open. It's like a grout, but not exactly a grout. You stick a fire hose in there and you just let this flowable fill flow through it. That's going to solidify it. And uh, so we had that going. Mm-hmm. And we, the villages had their big engineer. front front load dozers with uh, big 20 yard trucks of dirt. They were coming in and just packing it. Once the flowable fill was yeah. down there, packing it up against the house. Oh, wow. Um, well, the, the most amazing then, thing uh, about that, like, <laughs> so the villages are known to have like really well built houses. Because yeah. apparently the, um, they're super strict with contractors about, hey, you're going to build this right or you're not going to build in here. But I don't know mm-hmm. if you remember this or not, but yeah. part of the driveway of the next door neighbor was hanging over this empty yeah. hole for hours. And we're just watching yeah. it. When's it going to fall? When's it going to? And eventually yeah. it did. But it was like that was to me. I was like, dang, <laughs> they really do build these houses mm-hmm. right for a driveway to sit there. Nothing supporting it. The only thing keeping it there was where, what it was tied into. That was impressive to me. Um, so, yeah. But it, anyway, in a lot of cases, if you're on the news, you're losing one house, maybe two. And in those, in that case, there, I think if if the engineer, Helicon, Flowable Phil, people from yeah. the Villa, if we all wouldn't have pulled together. Guys for, working over Easter. Over we, right e- Easter weekend, for sure. Mm-hmm. You know, we were there at 11 o'clock at night doing stuff. Uh, I think if everybody would not have pulled together um, those house, at least one house, yeah. probably two would have been lost. And by the by, by the miracle of that and, uh, you know, a few prayers on my part, um, mm-hmm. not to take credit for it, but <laughs> it all worked out. And very happy customer at the end of it. And uh, he ended up making out really well because the insurance carrier after that happened said, we don't want to go on with the repair. And we were like, we're almost there. And they said, well, too bad. And their only option at there was to pay him full policy and pay us. So he was able to like walk away. It was a great deal for him anyway. So yeah, that's great. Yeah, it was a great, great story. But we could yeah. go on for another hour. Yeah, right with, <laughs> uh, you know, we did a Trinity Trinity sinkhole at the Trinity Varsity Club yep, out, in, uh, that. out in uh, Pasco County. That was a that massive, was massive sinkhole that uh, approached the the Varsity Club sports bar, uh, as well as affected uh, Spring Haven uh, community, the the mm-hmm. roadway. Uh, but that took us. Uh, a lot of people thought it could not be repaired. Yep. Um, it took us close to a year and a half. Um, to get it uh, finally stabilized and done, but it uh, we won in the end, <laughs> as we, we as we have uh, to date. You know, knock on uh, yeah, wood I there. <laughs> we haven't been beat yet by a sinkhole, yeah. Um, but but yeah, it was a pleasure having you on the show, uh, Rich, and, yeah, and so talking much. this topic. You know, Rich and I both uh, really enjoy this this topic. We've been uh, in this uh, arena for the last uh, probably twenty years, um, but uh, you know, happy that Rich is over at Keller Williams and helping folks now that come up with these sinkhole issues and other realtors as well. Yeah, yeah. definitely. So just the last thing that might help people. Yeah. I've had I've had on multiple occasions, you know, where I'm selling a house that had been repaired and the people are having problems getting insurance. Mm-hmm. And who's your agent? And I always, I, there are agents who know how to navigate that water, mm-hmm. as crazy as it seems, and there are agents who don't. So Janessa, as you know, she has done sink she has written insurance on repaired sinkhole homes for a long time and whenever i have somebody who calls me and says their insurance agent is having a hard time getting to them it's like make it easy on yourself call her because she can get you through it so there should not be a repaired sinkhole there should be no problem getting insurance on it but if you have an un- inexperienced insurance agent they might tell you that there is but the best thing to do is find an agent who knows how to navigate those right, waters. Um, yeah. And I've never had, I've had people like, oh, we, you know, my, cause my <laughs> customers are freaking out. They can't get insurance. I was like, relax. Here's her number. Yeah. <laughs> Hour later, Rich, I got the insurance bond. <laughs> it's like, that was like, all right, I told you. But anyway, yeah. for what it's worth, that's, that's something that people should be aware of that don't mm-hmm. get freaked out if your insurance carrier or insurance person tells you it can't be done. Yeah. It can. You're just dealing with the wrong person at that time. Good right. point. Yeah, that's a good point. Okay, that wraps up our podcast. Thank you, Rich, for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more exciting content like this, and we will see you on the next one.